there's been a lot of very aggressive back and forth about the topic of evolution, and there are a wide range of public opinions on the subject. One of my observations in following the public discourse is that there seems to be a lot of misunderstanding about evolution going around. Some people claim that misunderstandings cause over 90% of all arguments. When I Google caused by a misunderstanding, I find about 475,000 entries. Regardless of the percentage or the number of Google hits, I think it's fair to say that like every kind of argument, much of the public debate about evolution is caused by misunderstanding. First off, what is evolution? See, this question requires a truly complex answer. Most evolutionary biologists and geneticists would define evolution as change in allele frequencies in a population over time. Now, let's break that down. A population is an interbreeding group of organisms. Alleles are different versions of a gene, the variation that makes us all different. So, allele frequencies are the ratios of different versions of a gene to each other. So, evolution is change in allele frequencies in a population over time. This happens automatically each time an individual in a population dies or is born. Think about it. Every time an individual in a population dies or is born, it changes the ratio of different types of genes in that population. In this sense of the word, evolution is a fact. In science, a fact is a confirmed observation. Facts laws, and well-tested hypotheses are all united together using theories. In science, a theory is a well-tested explanation of how the universe works that incorporates many facts, which in themselves explain nothing. The goal, the goal of science is to formulate theories. Theories can never become facts, because theories are explanations, and facts are only observations. So, when someone says that evolution is just a theory, they've just displayed their ignorance of the scientific method. Creationists and ideas, remember this. Some people who accept evolution will make fun of you when you say things like this, because nothing in science is better than theories. Einstein's general and special theories of relativity, the theory of a heliocentric solar system, cell theory, germ theory, etc. These are all examples of some of the greatest achievements of human understanding. I've explained the difference between theories and facts, and shown how in one sense of the word, evolution is a fact. Well, in another sense of the word, evolution is a well-supported and extremely useful scientific theory that can be further broken down into many theories. The most common theories discussed in relation to the public debate about evolution are the theories of common descent, natural selection, genetic drift, gradualism, and punctuated equilibrium. Most young earth creationists have difficulty squaring the theory of common descent, the theory that all life is related, with the literal genesis story of a young earth with several separate creation events over six days. This is where I find the most opposition to evolution. If people are a species of ape, and apes are related to every living thing, then that means that if there was a divine instantaneous creation from nothing, as some literalist religious traditions teach, then it was a single event, creating an original life form that could then multiply and evolve. Another commonly held belief is that God guides evolution. This may well be true, but it isn't testable by scientific methods. If you're open to learning about the evidence for evolutionary theory of common descent, there are plenty of great videos about it. There's some links on my page. Now, 
Michael Behe, the famous intelligent design godfather who popularized the term irreducible complexity, accepts the theory of common descent. In his book, Darwin's Black Box, he said, quote, I believe the evidence strongly supports common descent. He simply thinks that the theory of natural selection isn't enough to explain some complex biological structures and networks. Behe has never actually found a system that fits his definition of irreducible complexity, but I'll save that for another video. The theory of natural selection is simply a logical argument that holds as long as the assumptions are true. It is this. Observations. 1. Variation exists in populations. 2. Many of these differences can be inherited. 3. Organisms tend to have more offspring than the number of parents. 4. Despite this, on average, populations tend to stay the same size. Therefore, many organisms die without ever reproducing. So any heritable genetic differences that decrease the chances of survival or reproduction of an individual in relation to other individuals in the gene pool will tend to be gradually eliminated. Since anything with that version of a gene has a better chance of falling into the portion of the population that dies or doesn't reproduce as effectively. The result of this weeding out the least successful has the net effect of making each generation slightly better adapted to their environment, so long as the environment doesn't change too rapidly for selection to keep up. Natural selection is actually pretty obvious when, once you understand it, and many engineers use programs that work through random mutation and natural selection to design oil pipeline networks and airplanes. What many creationists and ID proponents don't agree with is that this process can build complex structures over time. It's important to note while the mutations that build up variation in a population are random, the process of selection, where the weakest are picked off or don't reproduce, is not random at all. Let me repeat that. Mutations are random, but selection is not random. Selection is predictable and often directional. It's a common misconception that evolution is random. It isn't. It contains many random elements, but overall it's a very non-random process, and the trends are becoming better and better understood daily. Okay, that's lesson one in evolution, understanding the public debate.